morning, Salt Strong Nation. It's Matt, Matt and the Yak, eight rods in the back, y'all know. Uh, this morning, it is freezing cold. Uh, when I got up this morning, it was 30 degrees, and it, it's sure enough cold. There was ice on my truck, ice on the kayak when uh, I got ready to leave. So it's freezing, um, literally. My pre-trip plan, was to get in this creek system where I am and there was supposed to be a five to ten mile an hour wind. There is no wind this morning. The water is crystal clear. Um, I have a falling tide. It is a low tide at noon. Um, but right now there is already um, a lot of water missing from this creek system that I'm fishing in. So my plan is to push straight towards the mouth of this creek system and fish the dumping tide and fish it when it comes back in. Now the tide says I have a low tide at, uh, at noon. However, in this creek system, the tide uh, actually flows about an hour or so behind in here. So I'm gonna use that to my benefit. Um, I got here um, deep into the creek system and I'm going to push way up towards the mouth um, and use the tide on the way back um, so that I just stay with the depth that I'm looking for. Um, so I can push as far to the mouth to where it starts coming in and I start getting some good water flow, some good tide, um, and I'll just ride that on back in. That's the plan. Um, I have downsized all of my baits. I'm going with a Ned rig and I've got the Fred on. Um, we're gonna try and get one on the Flamingo Joe. Uh, we're gonna do some big things today. I know we're gonna catch some fish. Um, it's just gonna be uh, tricky trying to get them to bite with this clear water. So we'll see what we can do, fish bump. So what I'm going to try and do now is get up into this skinny water right here and cast into that pool on the in between these two islands right here. I'm hoping right there on that depth change I can pick off a trout. Fish on, baby. Just like that. That's just how I was talking about working that drop off. Just like that. Looks like we got us a little rat red to come play. Pretty fish to start. Oh, yeah, he is pretty. So after catching that red fish, I decided to throw back into that area, knowing that that depth change was right there. I figured I should at least be able to pick up another fish. And on the first cast, you guessed. Before, on the drop, man. He's munching. Oh, he's a beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. On the Fred, man. I got a feeling I'm gonna pick up a few fish right here in this spot. Turns out I was wrong about that, but that's beautiful okay. Fish. We moved on and found some more fish. So I'm gonna switch rods just because I got this new bull bay bolt and I really want to catch a fish on it see what it feels like it's a seven foot medium <sighs> um, 
and I got it so that I could have something to work in these canals with in close quarters. So like I said, I didn't catch any more fish there. I did get to throw the bull bay a couple more times, but no real action on it yet. So after catching those first couple fish, I already knew that the weight I was using was probably going to be too heavy. There wasn't enough water in the canal system and that was probably due to the north winds. So I made an adjustment and retied. Once we got that Dr. Juice on there, we're ready to rock. I wanted to approach this area the same way. I was watching the way the water was flowing and reading the current and just wanting to present my bait in the way that the water was flowing. If you notice the whole time I'm waiting on a bite, I keep looking to my right. I'm doing that to plan where I'm going next or where I plan to uh, target next in this drop off. Knowing that these tide islands are where the heat will hold from the sun, that's where the predatory fish are going to be sitting waiting on a meal. So that's where I'm trying to target the drop offs in these next to these tide islands. Decent red. Oh goodness. Really good. Really good red fish. Let's go. Let's go. Sitting right here in this trench. Really light. Really light thump. Barely hit it. Barely tapped it. On the thread. Pulling redfish every day. If you notice how skinny this water is right here, this is where I caught this fish. If I had still been using the same weight I was before, I probably would have spooked that redfish and not caught him. Just drifting through the creek system. The tide island up there in the top right hand corner is exactly where I caught the redfish, so I haven't gone far. Another little baby red. Pretty little thing. went down the creek just a little bit further and there's this drop off that drops to about six feet. You can see the water level is really shallow right there, but where I'm fishing is six to eight feet.
This is the exact same spot. I've just drifted a few feet. Notice how as soon as my bait came off of that ledge, it was nailed. Another little baby red fish. I wanted to keep targeting this drop off as I figured I'd probably pick up a couple more fish there. With the change in weight I was using, I had to wait a little while for the bait to actually get to the bottom, but it would usually get hit before it made it there. just picked up a brand new bull bait bolt so I decided to switch because I wanted to see what it felt like to hook up on that the bull bay is a seven footer I got it specifically for working in creeks and canals it's still a medium power but uh, it allows me to work in tighter quarters a little bit better. Not bad, let's go. As you can see, I did pair that Bull Bay Bolt with the BGMQ, and I would like to say that it pairs amazingly. Pretty fish. Well, you know what they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I kept casting. I missed that fish, as you can see. But uh, once you start catching fish on those Z-Man plastics, they start to get a little misshapen. So you have to go back and fix them every once in a while. Right here at the kayak. Red fish. So I came to this creek bend, just drifted a little bit further, and sitting here in this deeper pocket, I was able to find another couple of trout. More trout, a skinny. 
skinny trout. Send him on back. A little kickback. After I got through that stretch in the creek system, I came to this exposed oyster bar. Normally, I know I could find a couple redfish here, or at least one, but with the way the tide was pushed out and it was exposed like it was, there really wasn't a deeper pocket for me to uh, target. So I decided to follow the current and try and fish the way the current was flowing. Look, settle down, dude. Remember that being with the wintertime pattern, all the bites are really slow. So my presentation had to be super slow for all of these fish. And I am targeting these deeper pockets, but with using a 10th ounce jig head, net head jig head, I really was having to wait to let it get to the bottom. This guy was obviously going to make me chase him everywhere. So I moved forward just a little bit and actually sided my kayak up against the side of the bank and started fishing uh, from a stationary position. I made sure every time that I came to one of these creek bends, I made a point to spend a little bit extra time in these deeper pockets because sometimes you got to weed through some of the smaller fish to get through the bigger ones. lovinglures.com So around that bend was the opening to the creek system. I finally made it all the way out and the tide had just started to come in where I was. So I was going to sit here for a little bit, soak up the scenery, have lunch, and just wait a little while for the tide to come back in.
If there's anyone that actually knows what's going on right here, then that means you're a true professional and you understand the value of a shot. I eventually turned and headed back the way I came uh, to follow the tide back in and of course my GoPro wasn't running when I first started so made sure it was running as soon as I hooked up. Right up under me. Right up under the kayak. You'll notice that right here I stop to fix my bait. Once you start catching a, a pretty decent amount of fish on these Z-Man plastics, if you're using a hook style that has one of those wire hook keep or bait keeps on it, on the hook, it tends to get a little messed up on the inside of those Z-Man plastics. So you sometimes have to uh, situate them a little bit differently so they'll sit right. Sometimes you can take them off and re-rig them correctly sometimes they won't go on right so just keep that in mind you'll see i go to reach in here for another rod i've been having a pretty good day on the fret up to this point uh and but i was catching a lot of small fish uh, smaller trout um, i was hoping that maybe if i switched over to this savage gear shrimp profile uh, i could maybe hook into something a little bit bigger It wasn't the bigger fish we were hoping for, but it was a fish nonetheless. Fished my way back into the creek system. I went back to the Fred and uh, I just started picking up more trout. about eight redfish today on the Fred. Let's go. Moving on back into the creek. I'm getting a little tired. I'm getting a little lackadaisical. I'm kind of paying attention to everything else but what I should be. And, well, what do you guess happens? So I let that fish go, and once it did, I threw right back where he was. And you already know. Right here. There's the guy. The whole feisty little schoolie. The tide island on the screen in front of you is actually the exact same spot where I caught the big redfish first thing in the morning.
I catch another couple fish on the way in, so I'll just speed it up. <clears throat> There's nothing spectacular that happens, but I'll just show you the rest anyway. This fish here would actually end up being my last fish. Uh, if you see, I'm actually drifting over water that's probably only six inches deep, but where I'm casting to, it's about two foot. I'm just following the natural channel that's in the creek system that the water flows through when the tide comes in and out. Another redfish. If you haven't gone to 11lures.com by now, I don't know what you're doing, man. Well, I'm headed back into the to the landing. Uh, I'm gonna call it. I would say today was a successful day. Uh, we caught some good fish. Caught a bunch of fish. Uh, maybe not a whole lot of good ones. Um, but we did find the fish here in the creek system, and that's what is important. Um, I found a whole bunch of schooly trout around the eddies on the bends in the creek system. Um, but the further I got towards the mouth of the creek system, the slower and much more lethargic the fish were to eat. It seemed like I had to, I definitely had to make contact with the bottom, but if I tried to use heavier weight heavier than a eighth ounce tenth ounce. anytime i got over that I, I lost all my bites i got i got the majority of my bites on a tenth ounce net head with the fred um caught me a nice uh 24 25 inch redfish it's a good day um the takeaway from this is from my pre-trip plan i expected it to be freezing cold and the fish to be super lethargic um, i wasn't off on my pre-trip plan the fish were really slow um it was not cloudy like i was expecting it ended up being super clear super clear water it was just it was a good day right now i gotta take all these rods down from behind me because this winter time spot that I'm at right now is a little sus getting into so I'm doing what I gotta do to get where I need to go Sometimes you just gotta lay everything down to get where you need to go. was a good day caught some good fish the plan worked uh, the weather was a little different than predicted but the plan still held together that pre-trip plan is super important well I'm gonna leave y'all with it I'm gonna get loaded up and y'all have a good one all right salt strong nation fish bump and if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we are the number one online fishing club in America. We actually guarantee to help you find and catch more fish, save money on tackle, make friends while doing it, or it's free. So we hope to see you in the Salt Strong Insider Club soon, and thanks for watching.